Welcome to an example on how to use the TID4 graphing calculator to determine a probability involving a normal distribution. We'll solve this problem using data values as well as using z-scores. In this example, a class is given an exam. The distribution of the scores is normal and the mean is 74 and the standard deviation is 7. What is the probability that a student scored between 72 and 87? We can express this probability using this notation here where we say the probability of x being greater than 72 and less than 87. So we know the mean or mu equals 74 and the standard deviation or sigma equals 7. Let's model this distribution using the normal distribution curve shown here where the mean would be in the middle which is 74 and the horizontal axis is scaled by standard deviations and because the standard deviation is 7, at this mark we'd have 74 plus 7, which equals 81. Here we'd have 81 plus 7, which is 88. And then 88 plus 7 is equal to 95. Now to the left of 74, we'd have 74 minus 7, which is 67. 67 minus 7 is 60. And 60 minus 7 is equal to 53. Now let's locate the test scores of 72 and 87 on the horizontal axis. Well, the test score of 72 would be approximately here. And the test score of 87 would be approximately here. So we're looking for the probability that a randomly selected test score would be in this region here. And we can determine this probability using the normal CDF feature on the T84. From the home screen, we press second VARS for the distribution menu option two for normal CDF. If you have an older operating system, you won't see this screen. You'll see the normal CDF feature on the home screen. And I'll address that situation in just a moment. From here, we enter the lower bound, which is going to be the lower test score of 72. So we enter 72, enter. The upper bound is the upper test score, which is 87, enter. Mu is 74, which is the mean. Sigma is a standard deviation, which is seven. Enter. When the cursor is on paste, we press enter. And now again, if you have an older operating system, you'll have to enter the information from the home screen like we see here, where you first enter the lower bound, comma, upper bound, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. And then close parenthesis. If you press enter, notice the probability is approximately 0 0.5808 if we round to four decimal places. So while we are done with this problem, let's also determine the probability by using the z-scores for 72 and 87. This is a method you'd also have to use if you were required to use a table rather than the calculator. So we'd first find the z-score for the test score of 72 and then the z-score for the test score of 87 where the z-score is equal to the quantity x minus mu divided by sigma, where x is a data value, mu is the mean, and sigma is a standard deviation. So for 72, the z-score is 72 minus 74 divided by 7, which is equal to negative 2 sevenths. But let's also get a decimal approximation, because if you did have to use a table, you would use a decimal approximation. So negative 2 divided by 7, is approximately negative 0 0.2857. And now we'll find the z-score for 87, which should be equal to 87 minus 74 divided by 7. So we have 13 divided by 7. Let's also get our decimal approximation. 13 divided by 7 is approximately 1.8571. which means the probability that x is greater than 72 and less than 87 is equal to the probability that the z-score is greater than, let's use the exact value of negative 2 sevenths, and less than, let's use the exact value of 13 sevenths. Let's model this on the standard normal distribution, where for the standard normal distribution, we have z-scores along the horizontal axis. So we have zero here in the middle, 
the right we have 1, 2, 3. To the left we have negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So the z-score of negative 2 sevenths, which is approximately negative 0 0.2857, would be approximately here. And the z-score of 13 sevenths would be approximately here. So because we're trying to find the probability that the z-score is between these two values, we want to find the probability that the z-score would be in this interval here. And remember, for the standard normal distribution, the probability is equal to the actual area under the curve over this interval. Remember, for the standard normal distribution, the entire area under the curve would be equal to 1. So also notice how these z-scores correspond to the data values shown here for the normal distribution curve. So going back to the calculator one last time, we'll press second VARS for the distribution menu, option two, and now because we have z-scores, the lower bound is going to be negative two-sevenths, enter. The upper bound is going to be 13 sevenths, enter. And now because we have z-scores, rather than data values, the mean or mu is always zero, which is already there, and sigma, the standard deviation, is always one. So again, when we're dealing with z-scores, mu is always zero, and sigma is always one. So enter, enter, and again, if you have an old operating system, you have to enter in the lower bound, comma, upper bound, comma, zero, comma, one, though if you do leave off the zero and the one by default, mu is zero and sigma is one. So we press enter, notice how we get exactly the same probability that we did using the data values or x values, approximately 0 0.5808. Of course, normally you wouldn't find the probability two ways for the same problem using the data values as well as z-scores, but I think it is important to make the connection between the data values and the z-scores when working with a normal distribution. I hope you found this helpful.